This is a summary of how Cradle to Cradle certification measures the sustainability of your product and your company operations. You can use it either to measure your success or as a design guide and management guide to set goals you want to achieve. It has five categories for its certification criteria. Material health, material reutilization, renewable energy, water stewardship, and social responsibility. The first two are all about your product. The other three are mostly about your operations. The first category, and the most fundamental, is material health. The first certification point is to identify all the ingredients in your product down to 100 parts per million. That's 0.01% by mass. Call your suppliers to get the data. The next point is to define every one of your ingredients as a biological nutrient or a technical nutrient. Biological nutrients are grown or born and can be returned to the ecosystem as food for other things to grow from compostable or biodegradable. Technical nutrients might be mined or they might be grown, but they can't be returned to the ecosystem as food. They can only be used by industry. To get this certification point, you don't need to change your material choices. You just need to classify everything as one or the other. Although, if you have materials that you don't think could ever be a nutrient for either the ecosystem or industry, you should look for a different material. For the next point, Cradle to Cradle has a list of known toxic chemicals and materials, the banned list. It's short, only about seven pages long, but you can only be certified if you're not using any of them. You also get a point for having your suppliers verify they also don't use any banned list substances. The next few points are for assessing the health of your chemicals and materials. Assessing materials for toxicity is actually very complicated. I recommend hiring an expert to do it for you. But here's a quick summary of their system. There are four levels of health hazard, A, B, C, and X. A and B are both good, with A being ideal. C is moderately problematic, but X is very toxic, and you should phase it out as soon as you can. Although, you can still get this point without doing that, just with a plan to do it. Finally, notice the gray level. That's unknown, and unfortunately it comes up a lot because there is so much unknown in toxicology. Also, Note that this scores hazard, not risk. Risk is a combination of hazard, your exposure to the hazard, and your vulnerability to the hazard. But here, we just care about hazard, the inherent danger. So it doesn't matter how good your protective equipment or procedures are for minimizing exposures. All that matters is the hazard. But Getting back to the certification, how many ingredients do you need to assess? To get bronze certification, you need to assess 75% by mass, and while you can still have ingredients scoring an X, you need a plan to replace them. To get silver certification, you need to assess 95% of ingredients and have none that score an X. And to get gold certification, you need to assess 100% and have no Xs. So, where do you get all this hazard data? Well, one place is ferrosproject.net. It has data for some cradle-to-cradle -cradle health scores, and what's more common and almost the same, the green screen hazard scoring system. It has scored thousands of chemicals. Here's a screenshot from Ferros showing cellulose spray insulation, all seven of its ingredients. The color coding isn't exactly the same as Cradle to Cradle, but it's similar. Red is bad, yellow is better, green is good, uh, and gray and dashes are unknown. And again, this is hard to do yourself, so hire an accredited health assessor. Health assessment should consider your product's intended use and all life cycle stages. So you also get a certification point for assessing process chemicals. That's things that don't end up in your final product, but are used in your factory. 
There is also a point for meeting emissions standards. Carpets and paints often emit volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. Uh, many plywood adhesives off-gas off urea formaldehyde, which is a VOC. You get this point if your product does not generate toxic emissions like these. Finally, besides the certification points, there's a mindset in Cradle to Cradle of not just doing less bad, but doing good. So think about how you can do that in material health. For example, don't just eliminate the worst materials, level X. Aim for good, healthy materials at level A. The trick is there are no authoritative lists of good chemicals out there, so I recommend starting your own list. Track whatever data you want about them, but especially include their health and envir environmental properties and their functionality for your product type, because true sustainability requires both. Okay, that's it for material health. Next up is material reutilization. Before we get into the certification points, remember biological nutrients and technical nutrients? Well, a nice thing about biological nutrients is that they can all share the same end of life. No matter how many different materials with different colors, strengths, stiffnesses, melting points, whatever, if it's compostable, it's compostable. It all goes in the same pile. Technical nutrients, however, need to be separated. For example, aluminum is infinitely recyclable, but it's not recyclable with steel. PET plastic is recyclable, but not with ABS plastic. In fact, plastics aren't even recyclable with paint on them. You need a lot of separation. Anything that's inseparable can't be a nutrient, so it goes to landfill or incineration. The certification points you get here are determined by how much of your product is reutilized, according to this equation. So, if your product is made from 40% recycled content, that's 40 times 1. And if at its end of life, it's 30% recyclable and 45% compostable, that's 30 plus 45 all times 2. And then you add those up, and you divide by 3, and you get a material reutilization score of 63 in this case. Note that this currently does not count reuse or repair or long life, but they're considering that for certification version 4. The material reutilization score determines most of your certification level in this category, from 35 to bronze to 100 for platinum, meaning all of your materials both came from reutilization and will be reused at the end of life. But there's also a point for having a strategy to start recovering material yourself, like a take-back program or product service system, etc. Finally, you get a point if you actually already are recovering material yourself. As mentioned earlier, Cradle to Cradle's philosophy encourages not just doing less bad, but trying to do good. For material reutilization, this means upcycling. It's where the next product has a higher value than the last product it was made out of. This could be you making your product from the waste material of lower cost products. There's no separate certification point for it yet, but this is a vision of having a positive impact. Okay, that's it for material reutilization. Next up is renewable energy. The lowest certification point is to simply quantify how much energy you use of different sources, both renewable and non-renewable. You don't have to change anything, just count it. This is in your final manufacturing stage. You don't have to count your supply chain. For the next point, even if you don't have any renewable power or carbon offsetting today, you get a point for having a plan to get there. But to get certified at the good levels, you need to use renewable electricity and offset emissions from fossil fuels you use, like gas for heating or vehicles.
And yes, you need to do both. To get silver certification, you need to generate 5% renewable electricity and offset 5% of your fossil fuel use and 50% for gold. And yes, to get platinum, you need more than 100%. This is to not just do less bad, but be a positive force for good. And again, this is just in your final manufacturing stage. You don't have to count your supply chain. For the renewable electricity part of these points, you can generate your own clean electricity on site or off site, or you could purchase green electricity from the grid. Or you can buy renewable energy credits, but carbon offsets from planting trees don't count. They do count for the part of this point on offsetting emissions, of course. Remember, in addition to renewable electricity, you also need to offset some of the carbon emissions that you still have for heat or vehicles or whatnot. The last two energy points are about embodied energy in the materials that make up your product. The first point is just to quantify embodied energy and have a strategy to improve it. The second point is to offset, reduce, or otherwise improve at least 5% of that embodied energy. That'll get you to platinum certification. When thinking about how you could go from less bad to good here, consider can you make your product from materials that sequester carbon themselves? Can you become carbon negative? Okay, that's it for energy. Next is water stewardship. The most basic point here is to create or adopt official guidelines for how your company handles water. And the next point is to just obey local laws on water pollution. So not exceeding the acceptable discharge of pollution into local waterways in the last two years. The next point is to do a study determining whether water scarcity or sensitive ecosystems exist around your factories. The next point is to do a water audit and quantify how much water you use and identify opportunities to reduce it. For this, use an accredited water assessor. It's a skill. To get silver certification or above, you also need to assess all the process chemicals in your effluent. Or if you don't have effluent yourself, you can get this point by characterizing 20% or more of your tier one suppliers chemical effluent and water depletion and have a strategy to improve it. To get gold certification or higher, you need to show that there are no problematic process chemicals in your effluent. You could do this by eliminating them from your processing, or you could do this by recycling the chemicals 100% in-house. And again, if you don't have much effluent of your own, you can get this point by demonstrating progress on your tier one supplier strategy that we mentioned. Finally, to get the top level of certification here, your factory's wastewater should be clean enough to meet local drinking water standards. As always, we want to aim for positive impacts. So can your wastewater be cleaner than local drinking water? Or can your factories restore local ecosystems or water tables? It might sound hard, but it's been done. Okay, that's it for water. Finally, the last category of cradle to cradle certification is social fairness. The easiest point here is to do a streamlined self audit of your operations to assess protection of fundamental human rights. You don't need to do anything differently, just assess where you are now. And because it's a streamlined audit, you don't need to go out to your factories. You can do this at your desk. You can get data from the social hotspots database or US Department of Labor, UNICEF, World Bank or others. And the next point is having management procedures to fix any problems found in your self audit. The next point is to do a full self audit and make a strategy for positive impact. Now, a full audit does mean going to your actual factories and it means using a respected standard like the UN Global Compact self-assessment tool or B Corp impact assessment. 
To get silver certification or above, you've got a four-way choice. The first is to do a material specific audit of 25% or more of your product's materials by mass, like FSC certification of wood or paper. The second choice is to do an issue related audit of 25% or more of your product's materials, like fair trade certification. You don't have to get certified, just self audit to see how well you'd score. Although you do get another point if you do get certified. The third way to get silver certification is to investigate local fairness in your supply chain and develop a strategy to make positive impact. The fourth way to get silver certification is to conduct an innovative social project that positively impacts employees' lives, the local community, or other social aspects of the supply chain. Even recycling and reuse projects count. The goal is to try new things for positive impacts. Because again, Cradle to Cradle doesn't just want you to do less bad, it actually wants you to do good in the world. So. That's it for all of Cradle to Cradle certification. Once again, you can use it to either measure your success or as a design guide for your product and management guide for your operations. It can be a great way to ensure that you're doing good in the world.